that he's done. Mic drop. I'm here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hey, everybody. It is Thursday, May 27th, 2021. We are very excited to be here with you today. My name is Her name's Heather Cox. I'm Stephanie Stevens. And I'm David Perlman, and she's still Heather Cox. <laughs> <laughs> and we are excited. We have got our friends um, from where local to Stephanie and I here in Cherokee County. We have Mary and Dixie. They did some amazing work and they are MIE experts. And we thought, hey, this is a great thing going into the summer. So we are gonna let them share with you today. And ladies, it's all yours. So we are super excited to share with you today. We're gonna talk about our um, a program that we use to gamify professional development in our district and how we leverage Power BI and Microsoft Teams to do that. I'm Mary Hoffmeister. If you want to connect with me on Twitter, I am at the Mary Hoff. Dixie, you're still muted. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long day. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dixie Harper and you can connect with me on Twitter at Dixie Gator Girl. So as they said, we are from the Cherokee County School District and um, are ready to roll. So why did we develop this program? We were looking for a way to engage our teachers in professional learning, to offer them opportunities for professional development um, and to personalize their professional development and to recognize the amazing things that were happening in the CCSD classrooms. And that's probably the most important reason. How did we come up with the idea? Mostly from learning from others. We learned at conferences like GAETC and LeQ. Um, we also took LinkedIn learning courses to learn about badging and the way to properly gamify or um, incentivize professional development. And we also followed others via Twitter. So Mary, tell us about tell them about our dilemma. <laughs> so our biggest dilemma as we started this was everyone that we were learning from and everybody that was doing some sort of gamified professional development were in G word districts and they were not using Microsoft tools. And what we needed to find was a way that we could run a digital badging program using our approved CCSD district resources, because we've got a pretty stringent approval process for what we can use, what our teachers can use, but just you know, to protect student privacy. And so we had to find a way that we could leverage those tools as a Microsoft district and what that was gonna look like for us. And um, we had to figure out how we could give our teachers this way to jump into this personalized learning because our teachers were doing a great job of using personalized um, learning with their students but what we weren't seeing a lot of was a lot of personalized learning for teachers so teachers were kind of getting stuck in the it's a one size fit all pd everybody does this class everybody does it this way and how could we take that and leverage those teachers that really wanted to have a little extra and make that happen for them and then our other piece of that puzzle was that we really wanted to make sure that we were giving to our teachers because we have had a very robust microsoft innovative educator training program and we had a lot of teachers that had gone through that program, but then they kind of hit a brick wall and what do you do after that? So it was what could we do to give teachers something to build upon that learning that they went through the Microsoft Innovative Educator Program and give them ways to share that knowledge and hopefully in a lot of instances encourage them to become MIE experts as well. So that was our dilemma and our solution was that last school year we introduced something called 20 tech tools to try by 2020 and that was our first kind of foray into this challenge. We did 20 different challenges that teachers could participate in and they submitted those challenges to get badges and we created our leaderboard and all of that that we'll talk about in a little bit. But then after 2020 ended and we got to that May of 2020, we were in this dilemma of, OK, do we continue to go with 21 tech tools to try for 2021? It'd be great for a few years, but at some point when you got to like 20 tech tools to, or 30 tech tools to try by 2030, it was going to get a little bit extensive. And so we um, we took that opportunity after that first year to rebrand it as Connect Ed University 
on demand professional personalized learning for our teachers. And so when we rebranded the challenge, we made some changes to it and I'm going to let Dixie share how we rebranded those challenges with you. So our first year with the 20 by 2020 program, we only included challenges and adventure challenges. But once we saw the success moving forward, like Mary said, we wanted the program to encompass all of the PD we offer. So Connect Ed University is now made up of challenges, adventure challenges, bundles and courses. And so um, there's a web page Mary's going to link to. And this way, web page that we made with um, Microsoft Sway. It's coming up. There we go. <laughs> um, this is our home page and this home page links out to all of our other pages. And on this page, we lay out all the different types of challenges. So as she scrolls down, you'll see um, challenges, bundles and all of that listed here. So just to kind of give you an overview, a challenge is a single item where the bundle takes several challenges that are like in nature and bundles them together. So the teachers have to or the staff members have to complete three out of four of the challenges in the bundle in order to receive credit. Um, adventure challenges are opportunities to venture out to vendor websites to participate in PD that they offer like webinars that they offer or classes that they offer on their sites like um, like Adobe Spark, for example, they offer lots of different webinars on their site that you can um, go to. But um, and also, for example, Flipgrid does expert level so you can be a level one a level two um, or a student voice ambassador so we give them opportunities to go out to those vendor websites and participate in their expert programs or in their webinars um, and since obviously we're a microsoft district we wanted to definitely recognize those staff members who had completed mie and that is the one thing that covers all years so no matter when you were and um, became an mie expert um, or an mie you get credit for that and then last but not least we offer courses as well and these are all self-paced online courses um, that we offer through our department and um, they can do those at their their own pace anytime. On the next slide of or actually even down here on this web page, you will see the um, the badges that we use for each type of challenge. So you can see them there and they're also on the next slide of our PowerPoint. Um, but what I want you to notice about these badges is the shape of them. So the challenges are circles, the bundles have that sort of triangular shape, and then the courses look more like a, a starburst there. Um, these shapes will be noticeable when Mary shows you our leaderboard in just a little bit, so that will you'll see the connection there. But to earn these badges, staff members have to turn in some sort of documentation uh, for proof of completion of the challenge or the bundle. Um, and that documentation might be something like a tweet link, a link to a document in their OneDrive, or even a URL link to a student project. So when creating the different challenges, we knew that we had to be intentional with the information that we provided. And so each opportunity to earn a badge has its own web page. And so this example that we're going to show you next is the Office 365 operator. That is one of our types of bundles. And in this one, the, the teachers have to turn in um, documentation that shows that they used uh, three of the five tools listed there. So Sway, Forms, Word, PowerPoint, or Excel, but they have to turn in a student sample because remember it's not just about the teachers knowing how to do it, but it's using it with their students. So um, not only do we give the, the qualification for earning that badge, but we also give um, a link to learning resources. 
So for example, if a staff member wants to do sway with their students, but they don't know how, we've linked to a tutorial there. So they can go learn how to do sway and then turn around and use it with their students. Um, and that's there. So you can see as we go down, it just has um, different information for each part of the bundle there. Um, so for the achievement levels, one of the most important things I think we learned in our research before going forward with this, it wasn't just about, you know, setting up the challenges and all that, but there's a definite, um, I guess, pedagogy behind badging and gamification. And so we learned that there should be more than one way of showing progress on leaderboards um, so that, you know, it doesn't become static and Mary's going to speak to that a little bit later when she talks about the leaderboard. But um, as the year goes on, we update the leaderboard once or twice a month, depending on the month, and we really do check their entries for accuracy. It's not just a gimme like they can't just turn it in and, and it has to be done correctly. So we do um, take a little time to check that and we have had on occasion to reject an entry. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen where somebody didn't follow directions or turned in their own work and not a student work or whatever. But um, as the staff members earn points, they do have the opportunity to earn an accumulation award. So you'll see here um, this is our end of the year awards at level. So as they earn points, they can earn up to the bronze, silver, gold and platinum awards. And as part of our year end process, we give the teachers a certificate indicating their participation and their award level. We also send a letter out to the principals of every school to let them know who were the tech leaders in their building, because that's something that's important for them to know. Mary, you're muted too. <laughs> that leads us to the leaderboard. And what we're going to look at with the leaderboard is a couple of different things. I'm going to show you and kind of talk you through the leaderboard. And then we're going to look at actually how the leaderboard through Power BI can be embedded in Teams. So this is just a still static screenshot of our district leaderboard after we completed everything today. Um, I'll speak about the, um, the Sequoia zone and why there's so much yellow there, because typically this is much more balanced. But we learned a super valuable lesson about some of our challenges this year due to a school that was participating in the um, showcase schools incubator program and we'll we'll talk about that when we talk about what we're doing for next year a little differently but this dashboard was hosted on our sharepoint site um, through power bi and we displayed it on monitors in our training center and we also shared it with staff via their staff plc teams um, within our district our students don't aren't authentic well they're authenticated in teams but they don't use teams um, for assignments and other things so they're not a part of group teams but our staff members are so we shared it via staff plc teams to schools that were using teams and were using their um, leaderboard well we added a link to those teams and were, they were able to do that the um leaderboard was created completely using an excel spreadsheet that drove the entire um, data link with power bi and then you'll see that when we hop into it the, there were individual school and zone statuses that became a part of that because there is not a whole lot more competitive than um, <laughs> administrators when one school has more points than another. Um, so that was always a very interesting thing for us and it kind of led to some intrinsic motiv motivation for this. The goal for the leaderboard for us, as Dixie kind of talked about with the research, was we wanted it to be motivating and dynamic. So we had to really make sure that we took the opportunity, yes, to, you know, to to speak about these top 20 teachers that you see here on the top and how exciting that is. But what about that teacher that just got to gold and how that looks? So we made sure that on the subsequent pages of the dashboard that we didn't always sort at highest to lowest. We sorted it most recently obtained so that everybody had a chance to be at the top of some section of the leaderboard. The leaderboard had multiple pages. This was the first page. The second page was the individual leaderboard, which is what I really call the teacher sticker sheet because 
because teachers love stickers just about as much as kids. And really a badge is just a fancy sticker, right? So this Marissa Williams happened to be our leader this year and I asked her for permission to use her, um, her leaderboard as our example because of course her name would be plastered across it. She earned every single one of the badges that we did this year as well as obtained 530 points for adventure challenges. Um, but the individual leaderboard would show the badges and if you if an if a teacher had not earned a badge and they pulled themselves up it would show a blue box there so that they um it, they knew that they had yet to receive that badge um we also wanted to make sure that the leaderboard was searchable because in a large district the size of Cherokee County, even though this was an optional challenge, we weren't really sure how many people were going to participate. So we wanted to make sure that it was going to really um, be accessible for them to find themselves so that Marissa Williams didn't have to scroll all the way down to the bottom to find her name because as someone who formerly had a last name with a W it's always the worst to have to go to the bottom of everything to find yourself right so we made sure that it was searchable so that it would work in that way so but then the the other piece of it that we learned this year that was really fabulous was um how to integrate Teams um, and Power BI together. And it is such a super simple process, and I'm going to take y'all through that really quickly here. So I have my test playground channel that Dixie and I share here. But if I want to add any Power BI that I have created to a Teams, a Teams um, a channel, all I have to do is up here at the top, select the plus sign, and then it's going to show as my most frequently used tab if that tells you what kind of a nerd I am that Power BI is the first thing that you see on mine. But if you don't see it there, you can simply search for it in the search, but you select Power BI. And then it's going to take you to your workspaces and show you all of the Power BI reports you have created. So I'm going to go into my workspace and I'm going to actually pick our 20 by 2020 leader fair from last year. And when I select that and hit save, it is going to pull it in as an automatic tab here across the top of my um, team's uh, uh, team's channel. Wow, words failing me. Um, one option that I have is I can have it post to the main channel in that um, posts listing to say that it's there and it's it's also there as well. Um, but then if we walk you through our connect ed dashboard for the year, we talked about the main page and how that works. But something that I really love about Power BI that I just think is fantastic is that it continues to drill down. So for example, if I want to look just at preschool teachers, I click on the centers tab here and then I can narrow down to our ACE, our district offices, Tippins or our pre-K center. But every time I drill down, I can see what piece of that pie belongs to them and all of the participants from that area. So it lets me completely drill down in whatever way that I want. So if I want to see for a, a, a particular school here, you'll see the Sequoia Zone thing. There is one school that drove that. And that's a school that was going through the, um, the showcase school status. The individual transcript we talked about with the my computers not wanting to click on things with how the badges look. So you can see in this instance, this teacher that's going to pop up hasn't received all the badges, so it's going to show some of these blue blanks. Um, and I think we're having a nice little lag here. So you can see those blue um, blanks are where she hasn't earned those badges yet. So that's what it looks like if there's a blank there. Um, and then we have these four tabs that will address like which who has received which level. And like I said, I didn't want this to stay and always be Marissa Williams at the top because she re re because she had the most points. So this is actually sorted by when they achieved platinum. So the most recent to achieve is going to pop up on the top first, which I enjoy that because it does keep that more dynamic and um, works really well. So that's the Teams integration of it. And it works exactly the same as it does through SharePoint. It just gives teachers a really easy place to access and get to their data visualizations that are created in Power BI. Um, when we look at our results, these were our results for our 2020 challenge, um, and we were so super excited about the amount of participation we had that first year, especially when you think about that first year really kind of got cut short in uh, March because a lot of teachers didn't have time to do optional PD when they were just trying to keep their head above water and teach kids digitally from home, right? Um, and, but we did have, um, we had some pretty exciting results that first year, and you can see the info graphic tells you. I mean, we had 
1,233 staff members that participated that first year. Um, I'm going to let Dixie share our results from the second year, um, but we did have a drop, but we kind of expected that with this year being this year the way that it was. Exactly. So we did see a little bit of a drop this year. Um, one of the main things that we think happened is at the very beginning of last year, I talked to you about the MIE certification. Well, at the beginning of last year, when we were first kicking off the program, we sort of forced everyone who was MIE to um, plug in and uh, request credit for their MIE status and because of the way this school year started even though we were back in August we didn't get that face-to-face -face time with our teachers to kind of force them into um, putting that in this time so we think that was one of the things another reason that we think that stuff dropped this year the points dropped this year is because of um our inability to get in front of the students. Um, so a lot of times in our department as ITS, we get to do student um, workshops um, and a little bit more face to face with them and with the teachers. And so we know that that had some impact, but we're moving forward with it. We we um, are going to continue to change and improve and, and make it better. So Mary. So that leads me to what's next for us. I know I mentioned to you that we had some changes that we knew that we needed to make because of um, a school going through the incubator school um, program to be a showcase school and what all of that was going to look like. So we have kind of retooled our adventure challenges in a way so that we can make sure that we are making those adventure challenges a little more balanced and it not being like you can log in to the Microsoft Educator Center and take 50 courses and get 5,000 points because we were finding folks that were and maybe even recycling old courses that they may have taken a few years ago. So we've added some caps to courses that are a little bit different um, and we've retooled our challenges. So we have challenges that we've rotated in or out and we've added some brand new ones like um, a brand new one for us this year is a homepage hero, which we use Canvas as our LMS. So the homepage, he homepage hero, that's a bit of a tongue twister, badge um, can be earned by teachers if they share with us their homepage that they've created in Canvas that abides by our new district guidelines for setting up their course. So when we do that with these badges, we do have a variety of them. I mean, some of them are very clear what they're about, like Twitter chat. You're going to participate in a Twitter chat and you're going to follow those submission guidelines. Um, and we had a really great opportunity, and I'll let Dixie share about this, because we had other divisions within our district that reached out to us to help develop some challenges this year. So, right, that that was super exciting. So after our first year, um, we added Kronos Keepers. So that's one of our challenges this year, and it actually came from a collaboration with our finance department because they were struggling to get teachers or staff members to sign up for paperless w 2 so the digital w2 instead of them having to mail them out every year so they reached out to us and said hey could you make this a challenge and we were like absolutely that's a great way to use a challenge another one that we added um this past year was the grant grant grapevine challenge. Um, it was in collaboration with our re research department who um, works with grants in our district, so helps teachers write grants and all of that. And so they wanted to have teachers tweet about grants that they see on, you know, see or hear about. And that really did help us this year because there was a grant that was to get um, monitors for our digital teachers. And so it really did help our district a lot. Um, next year, we have two bundles that we're adding um, after collaborating with the special ed department. We are adding the acing accessibility bundle and also the one called lifting up language learners. We collaborated with the the ESOL um, department and we are we have put together a bundle for teachers to show how they're using strategies or um, developing book lists to go with either the um, ESOL department or the um, accessibility uh, special ed department. So it's been really cool to see this little project grow into something that 
the whole district wants to take part in. So and then the one other change, uh, some changes that we've made because we want to keep it fresh and new. We do always change out like so we kept five of the courses from this past year, but we're adding five new. So we'll always have 10 courses, but we'll always rotate them in that way. And the same thing for the bundles and challenges. We're going to continue to rotate. And what that means is, is two years from now, we can actually pull from some that maybe we had used before and just revise them. We do and we do edit them pretty extensively when we recreate them for the next year year um, and that's kind of where we're headed and kind of where we're going but and now we are ready for questions which is almost exactly on time which I am crazy impressed with <laughs> you guys did an awesome job on timing I'm so excited about that uh, you're true teachers at heart if you can master <laughs> master the timing schedule so Velvet I'll I'll turn it over to you because your hands up and you have some good questions and um, have been active in the chat so do you want to go ahead and ask the ladies So I see the question in the chat, um, the process to in place to carry over the excitement. So our hope is that by keeping the challenges fresh, you know, and um, not doing the same thing over and over again, um, that that will help keep the uh, the excitement going. Um, next year, it sounds like we're, we're going to be, you know, status quo back back in front of our teachers and all of that. So we'll have a more face to face way of keeping that going. So when we do our monthly um, uh, workshops out at the schools, we always try to pump that up, pump it up. So if, for example, if we're doing um, a workshop on Nearpod out in the schools, then we will um, promote like how they could earn badges and points using Nearpod with their students. And so just s some of the challenges are very simple and they can just quickly plug in. Oh, I created this Nearpod. I get 20 points, you know, that kind of thing. So being able to promote it in person will definitely help next year. Another thing that we're doing um, this next year is at the bottom of every web page. We have a report a problem little form that they can fill out if they notice something's wrong, something's not working, but we've also added, hey, do you have any ideas? So where our hope is that we will get ideas from out in the field, you know, from our teachers of ideas of challenges that they'd like to see. Um, um, that's wonderful. Um, one thing in my experience is that the burnout happens if they don't have the support there to help them immediately. And I can't recall in the beginning of your presentation, was this a district wide challenge or the, was this a one school challenge? So it this was is a district wide, wide challenge. And yeah. what what we made sure to do on each challenge page. So even if the challenge was something as simple as make sure your signature and outlook is set up correctly on that page for the challenge, it had directions both in print and in video for exactly how to do that with examples. And we also have a, you know, if you need any assistance, make sure and book an appointment with your ITS because we all uh, support that as well. So they always had the opportunity to reach out to us for additional support. Support. Okay, great. And do you happen to know if the technology support staff in all of the schools did this challenge as well? Because a lot of times you'll be teaching the teachers to use these technologies and then the IT support staff is out of the loop. They're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And you mean uh, Canvas and Canva? You mean like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we may need so to. We, need, we may need to open up our pipeline to allow these tools in because the security protocols in our school are really strict and. Um, so what we developed it as a technology division, so we had our hands on it and it was checked by because uh, we we're in the instructional technology side. It was checked by our technology services, which is our field services, our break and fix people that are the ones that are in schools every day. I mean, we're in like I have seven different school sites, but our TSs would only have one or two. So mm -hmm. they all saw it and were aware of it. We shared it in a um, division wide meeting. Um, and the one thing that we did do because we we, and we went back and forth about this. We did not allow technology services staff to participate in the challenge because we wanted it to be teachers and we wanted the accolades and everything about it to go straight. Oh, to yeah, teachers. I completely agree um, because the IT yeah. staff will blow everybody out of the water. Yes, but, and, and super but I was about. hoping 
I was hoping to see that they would be in attendance just to be part of that experience, learn everything that their teachers are learning so they can support it on site. Exactly. Well, that's I, a great I wanted, point. I wanted to add to that. It, one of our top 10 people um, was a district employee, like one of our, and, and this is really how the ESOL bundle came to be. She works in at the district level in the in the ESOL department and she participated and she's like, hey, I would love to do a bundle. And so we work together and that's how that came to be. So even though we didn't allow like our department to take part because we would we would blow everybody out of the water. It wouldn't be fair, <laughs> but um, really anyone in the district can do it. So like even we've we've had yeah, some um, some clerical thing. people that wanted to take part and we don't turn anyone down. You know, they have a harder time with some of the challenges because, you know, it does require student work. So if they don't work directly with students, they can't earn some of those. But we tried to make sure that our challenges were as far as like teachers were concerned, that it didn't matter if you taught preschool or if you taught 12th grade AP, you know, biology, that there was something in there for everyone. Okay, awesome. great. I, I'll, I'll, I'll open up the floor. I would definitely like to see a follow up on this like a year later to see who stuck with it, who dropped off the face of the earth <laughs> and went back to their old ways, you know, because it happens to the best of us. Um, I would love to see a follow up if, if you're willing to do that. Thank you. And I think something yeah. interesting as we wrap here and if anyone else has questions, if you could pop them in the chat and then I know the ladies will address those, but we're we're going to hear hit time. Something really cool about Cherokee County is that they have um, I'm not sure that they did it this past year again with everything going on, but in the past, every single teacher has gone through the MIE process to get initial Microsoft Innovative Educator certification, which means that there is capacity built in every classroom across the district for them to help one another um, with, with not just the tools themselves, but with the practice and the pedagogy behind it, which I think is really great. And a lot of the districts I work with every day are just now starting to think about, is that possible? Can we and should we do that same thing? And so, um, to your point exactly, Velvet, is, is that like capacity building, long standing duration. I think that's a, a key piece. So ladies, thank you. I'm so glad that we got to hear from you. I love the data side of it. I'm a data nerd too, and I love those visualizations. And it's just a great way, again, to motivate and to, to quantify the work that folks are doing. Heather, you want to take us out? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording just a second. Thank you again, ladies, for being here. I had seen all the work on Twitter and was loving it and was egging on my children's schools to participate and <laughs> get to the top of the leaderboard. So thank you so much. You're welcome.